Are you looking to upgrade your mainboard? Well, here's a complete guide to the MKS Robin E3 and the Big Tree Tech SKR E3 Turbo. I'm back with another mainboard guide and this one like the others will be added to my mainboard guide playlist. Both of these mainboards are being featured because of your requests. The SKR E3 Turbo by many viewers and the MKS Robin E3 by a patron who pointed to a video from Vector3D. The video does a great job focusing on the use of an MKS touchscreen, but it doesn't cover things like BL touch, filament runout, NeoPixels and testing with a Big Tree Tech TFT touchscreen. I'm going to cover all of that and more, and there's links to everything in the description and timestamps for your convenience. We're going to start with the specifications of each board. And although I'm including both of these boards in the one video, they're not necessarily direct competitors of each other. They are both intended to replace the board in an Ender 3, Ender 5 or CR10. As we can see, the Creality version 4 32-bit board has the same mounting holes as the original 8-bit boards just like other boards I've tested in the past, like the EasyBoard Lite from TH3D and the SKR Mini E3 from Big Tree Tech. The SKR Robin E3 is like these other boards in that the footprint matches exactly and like the original board, it has four stepper motor drivers. The E3 version has TMC 2209s and the E3D version has bare sockets to plug in whatever stepper motor drivers that you want. Like a lot of SKR boards, it has headers where you can put on jumpers to help attach the serial connection with TMC drivers and the main board. For this video, however, we'll be concentrating on the E3 version. The Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3 costs around 35 to 40 US dollars, depending on if you can get it on sale. So the big advantage here for the MKS board is the price, which is approximately half. It's cheapest on AliExpress and by clicking the picture here, you select whether you want the D version or the plain E3 version and that's the one that has the TMC 2209s built in. I purchased one of each to make this video. The first thing you'll notice about the E3 Turbo is that it's a physically bigger board. This isn't Big Tree Tech being lazy with the design, but rather the fact that it's a lot more feature packed. You'll notice that there's five stepper motor drivers, TMC 2209s, there's also extra MOSFETs for running a second hot end and a second thermistor input. Despite the board being bigger, the mounting holes still match all of the other boards. With this board, we have a price increase to US $51. But as I said, the capabilities are a lot more. This board will let you upgrade to dual extrusion or run a second Z-axis stepper with independent control. I receive this board free of charge directly from Big Tree Tech. Think of it like the equivalent of an SKR version 1.4 turbo with TMC 2209s, except with a mounting footprint already suited to an Ender 3, Ender 5 or CR10. I've updated my processor table to include both of these boards. The MKS Robin boards are the equivalent of an SKR Mini E3, so processor wise that puts them a smidgen worse than the Creality version 4 32-bit boards. As we mentioned, however, the E3 Turbo is on par with an SKR version 1.4 Turbo or the EasyBoard Lite, so that means more speed and memory from the processor. The big advantage of both of these boards over the Creality offering is that they have TMC stepper motor drivers connected in smart mode. Unlike the Creality version 4 board, we can step our stepper motor current via G-code, we can run Linear Advance, and we can run all of the other TMC smart features too. So these boards are in different classes, but they still have a lot of similarities. And it's worth pointing out that although they're designed for Ender 3s, of course you could use them in most other 3D printers. This video was straightforward to make because of the excellent resources provided by both manufacturers. Let's start on the GitHub page for the MKS Robin E3 and E3D, and I'd recommend scrolling down and going straight to the wiki. Here we can find really handy things such as the wiring pinout for each board, including dimensions, all of the ports labeled, and a wiring diagram to help you connect it to your printer. In the firmware folder, you'll find Marlin compiled and ready to go. However, I always prefer to use the main branch of Marlin as the updates can be a little slow from other manufacturers. For Big Tree Tech, it's a similar situation for the SKR E3 Turbo. We have a rundown of the specs on the front page, and if we come into hardware, 
will find the same type of diagrams with all of the pins labeled and a user manual with a lot of other quality information. And like MKS, if we come into firmware, we'll find some firmware sources as well as pre-compiled binaries, but once again, they're not particularly up to date. I have to say well done to both of these manufacturers for looking after their customers by providing thorough documentation. Let's get each of these boards installed into an Ender 3 and see what firmware they come with. Before you pull your old printer apart, I'd recommend connecting via terminal, sending M503 and copying and pasting the data for later reference. The Robin E3 is identical in size, so fits comfortably into the Ender 3 case. The E3 Turbo, however, I was a little bit concerned about, but I was glad to see that it still fit within the standard Ender 3 case without any issues. Both boards also comfortably fit within the stock Ender 5 case, with the holes in the case lining up with the SD card and USB ports. As for me, I'm running my all-in-one universal rear electronics case. That has the advantage that you can slide the case out the back of the machine, and if you want, even prop it up to put it on the table and have complete access. There's also a remix available for the E3 Turbo by the Samurai. Installation for each is more or less unplugging everything from the old board, and you may like to use this diagram to keep track of everything, and it's linked in the description. For the Robin E3, everything plugs in in pretty much the same location. The only thing to look out for is the extruder stepper as there's twin Z axis outputs. You'll also notice I've got there labeled L where to plug in a big tree tech TFT touchscreen. The SKR E3 Turbo is also very similar, but there's two important variations to discuss. And in this diagram, they're labeled G and H. Let's start with G, which is the fan that cools the main board in the factory Ender 3. There's not actually a proper socket for that on the E3 Turbo, so instead we have to put it into the port labeled Fan 2, matching the positive and negative. The other fan, labeled H, goes to the hot end heatsink and normally has exposed wires that go into the screw terminals. If you have no other option, you can put them into the same terminals and that fan will remain on. However, if you can, it's far better to crimp on a connector and plug it into fan one. That means that when the printer is cold, the heatsink fan will be off and therefore silent, but when you go over a certain temperature, it will turn on automatically to prevent things from getting clogged. It'll work either way, but this option is far nicer. The MKS board shipped with firmware to suit a standard Ender 3, whereas the SKR board shipped also for Ender 3, but set up for dual extrusion. Both boards were fairly recent versions of Marlin 2.0, and both boards worked with the Big Tree Tech TFT touchscreen when connected as per my wiring diagrams. Also, a quick reminder to make sure you attach the heat sinks with either of these main boards. Let's explore the various options with Marlin firmware. I want to start by thanking the Marlin devs and other contributors for making this part so easy for us. We've seen that each manufacturer runs their own versions of Marlin, but they're quite out of date. But we can get the latest by coming to the Marlin GitHub, selecting our branch, with Bugfix 2.0x being my favourite, and then coming to Code and clicking Download Zip. If we then come inside the config folder, there'll be a link to a zip file with all of the example configurations, and that's going to get most of the work done for us. If we look at the included examples on these configurations, we can see there's a range of 3D printer manufacturers included. And if we come to something popular like Creality and then Ender 3, you can see we've got examples set up for the E3 Turbo with three different configurations. And we've also got configurations set up for the MKS Robin E3 as well. To use these configurations, we come inside the same folders within the configuration zip file that we downloaded. And finally, inside the folder for the mainboard that we're using, we select any files present and instruct them into the Marlin folder of our downloaded firmware, overriding anything already there. If you'd like this explained in more detail or need help setting up the software, I've got a video linked in the description that will cover just that. Whether you're setting up your firmware from scratch like we just saw, or maybe you're altering your existing Marlin configs, here's what you need to double check for each board. Firstly, the MKS Robin E3, and our serial ports need to be set to 1 and 2. Our motherboard needs to be set to board underscore MKS underscore Robin underscore E3. And if you're using the E3D board, you would add a D to the end of that. And finally, for the E3 board, you need to set TMC 2209s 
for each axis. For the Robin E3, I found that I needed to swap around the stepper motor direction compared to what I needed on other main boards. The Auto Build Marlin plugin will compile your firmware just like other boards, the only variation being that we need the file called robin underscore e3.bin to go on the SD card ready to flash to the main board. For the SKR E3 Turbo, our serial ports are minus one and then zero. Our motherboard should be set to board underscore BTT underscore SKR underscore E3 underscore turbo. And again, our stepper motor drivers should all be set to TMC2209. One more change, to get the hot end heatsink fan turning on and off automatically, we need to change the auto fan pin for E0 from minus one to fan one underscore pin. The auto build Marlin plugin will again compile for this board without any issues, and we need to copy the traditional file firmware.bin to the SD card. For either of these boards, we insert the SD card with our firmware file into the main board, turn on the printer, and after a few seconds delay for the firmware to update, the printer should boot up with our new firmware. Each of these boards come with TMC2209 stepper motor drivers, and with that comes specific smart TMC functionality. But rather than cover all of that again, I've linked to a specific video that goes through it in the video description. If you've got an Ender 3 and all of this still seems too hard, I've got branches set up on my GitHub for both of these boards, for both stock as well as BL Touch, so you should be able to download and compile. Next up, we'll add auto bed leveling with a BL Touch. Like all of these upgrade boards, including the Creality version 4 board, these two new boards both have dedicated ports for a BL Touch, which means no pin 27 board required. Therefore, connecting a BL Touch to either board is quite straightforward. And I've linked to both of these diagrams in the video description. You'll notice in each case, I prefer to use the Z end stop plug to plug in the black and white wires for the BL Touch. That's because it requires the least firmware changes, and I've set up the firmware that's available to download to match this wiring. For both boards, after reflashing the firmware, I went to the BL Touch menu on the LCD to make sure the firmware could properly control the probe pin. The first time I homed the printer, I also used my finger instead of the bed to make sure the probe was triggering. And because I saved the M503 output before removing my old mainboard, I was able to re-enter my probe offsets, including the Z offset, directly into the LCD menu. If you are doing this from scratch, I've linked in the description to a video that goes through the whole process. After making the changes in Marlin firmware and connecting my BL Touch to each main board, each setup worked exactly as you would expect, probing a 3x3 grid with mesh compensation applied to the print and a great first layer on my warped bed. Next up, another popular accessory in filament runout detection. Again, both of these boards have a dedicated filament runout port, so this becomes quite easy. For both main boards, the only change required from the firmware that I've got on my GitHub is to uncomment filament runout sensor. And that will add support for one of these three pin simple filament runout sensors. On the MKS Robin E3, it's gonna plug into the material detection plug as shown. And on the SKR E3 Turbo, it's gonna plug into the E0 stop plug as shown. I tested filament runout detection on both main boards. And each time, as soon as I remove filament from the sensor, it paused, unloaded, and after I reloaded and hit continue, the print carried on seamlessly from the same position. It's not for everyone, but let's cover sensorless homing for both of these main boards. And this is one of the perks for when you use TMC2209 stepper motor drivers. Optionally, if you like, you can ditch your X and Y end stops. The firmware change required for either board is identical. In configuration advance, you need to uncomment define sensorless homing. And you'll notice in both of my diagrams, it talks about placing jumpers on diag pins. It's hard to see here, but obvious when you're looking at the board, but there's a header on each for X and Y labeled diag. If you're running sensorless homing, simply locate this and install the included jumpers so the driver can trigger back to the firmware. Obviously we need to unplug the X and Y end stops as well. After flashing the updated firmware, we still need to configure the sensitivity for the sensorless homing. And if we come into the configuration menu and then advanced setting, there'll be an option for TMC drivers and within that, the sensorless homing sensitivity. 
If the sensitivity is too low, you'll get a false positive with the machine homing in mid-air. But once you get your sensitivity values correct, it'll home with a solid little thump for both the X and Y axis. Our final area is adding RGB with NeoPixels. This is the only time the MKS Robin board fell down, as Marlin has labelled this board as well as the SKR Mini E3 that shares the same processor is incompatible with NeoPixels. Getting it all working will require a bunch of custom tweaks to the firmware to get around the compilation errors. The SKR E3 Turbo, however, with its different processor, had no such issues. In the firmware, we need to turn on NeoPixels, tell them what type, how many, and as well as setting the pin to P1 underscore 24. We then plug in our NeoPixel strip directly into the mainboard port as shown. If you enabled the startup test in the firmware, you'll know that everything's worked by seeing this three color sequence. And if you start a print, you'll notice that your NeoPixel strip will gradually change color from blue to violet and then red as everything comes up to temperature. If you're looking for more information on how to configure your NeoPixels, I've linked to this video in the description below. That's our testing done, so what are my final thoughts? Based on my testing, both of these boards are winners. And one of the biggest things here is that they both have silent stepper motor drivers, which makes a significant difference. <laughs> I did a lot of print testing to try out the various configurations for both of these boards. I needed a quick and fun print, so on Thingiverse I found this mini catapult and then the remixed version to suit PLA. It's a nice model, prints in two piece, slots together and each one worked perfectly. And now I've got enough to have my own mini army. At around half the price, the MKS Robin E3 is a good affordable alternative to the SKR Mini E3 from Big Tree Tech. The SKR E3 Turbo is more expensive, but it's also a big step up with more grunt and a lot more input output capability, which means you could run dual extrusion or something like dual Z axes, which I'm gonna try soon on my Ender 3. One other thing worth mentioning is that lots of people contacted me about the SKR E3 Turbo having temperature fluctuations that couldn't be removed with PID Auto-Tune. So I actually tested two boards back to back one of them was meant to be newer with a fix in place. One of them had a swing of around one degree, the other around half a degree. Perhaps other people had the problem worse, but based on my testing, it wasn't really a significant issue, but hopefully any new boards purchased from this point don't have the issue at all. That's it from me, so I guess it's time to hear from you, whether you've tried either of these boards before or perhaps you're going to from this point onwards. Please let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, Happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.